Good morning and welcome to the World Heritage City of Ubera. If you like, I will be your guide from now on, and together we will visit this city which is already universal. But before that, and since we are talking about universal and human heritage, let us begin by locating Ubera in the European Union. When the second half of the 20th century brought peace and friendship to the old continent, no one would have believed that in only 50 years that old continent would lead to a new Europe, without borders or distances, where people would be united by a common goal. For almost 20 years, Spain has been part of this new political order in Europe, which is an integration of various regions of the whole continent, each of them with its differences and similarities. Such is the case of Andalusia with its wide variety of people, traditions, art and customs, an example of the mixture of cultures and beliefs, a region of tolerant cohabitation and sign of solidarity. In the context of this extraordinary place, it is not surprising to come across a city like Úbeda. There are different ways to get to Úbeda, along the main road from Madrid in only three hours, from Valencia, on the east coast, and of course from Seville, along the main road that crosses the autonomous region of Andalusia and last but not least, from Malaga, the capital city of the Costa del Sol, where the main airport of southern Spain is. Uera is situated in a privileged geographical location, over a hill that borders with the valleys of the rivers Guadalquivir to the south and Guadalimar to the north. We must highlight the difference between the old city and the new city, from now on we'll try to better describe this city that has been called Astonishing Ubera or Ubera Queen and Gypsy. History and Art Well, here we are again. Now that we have found our bearings, the first thing you should know is where this amazing city behind me comes from. Ubeda was already inhabited by ancient civilizations prior to the Romans, but its importance dates back to the time of the Moorish conquest, whose people lived here until the 13th century, when the city was reconquered by the Castilian king, Fernando III, the saint. Every century and every period of history has imprinted its mark on Ubeda, but, as we know, sometimes certain periods have a greater impact on the urban design of a city than others, and without a doubt it is the 16th century that has most strongly influenced the designs of the city of Ubeda, making it one of the most emblematic architectural towns in Spain. The person responsible for this change was this man, Francisco de los Cobos, Secretary of State for the Almighty Emperor Charles I of Spain and the V of Germany. Francisco de los Cobos boasted all his power and wealth in an array of palaces and churches designed according to the new tendencies that were becoming fashionable in Italy. And this is the best place to start our tour of the city, the Plaza Vázquez de Molina, recently declared World Heritage Site. And, as you can see, it is obvious why. I can safely say that the city we know, the one that you can now see, is mainly the work of one family, de los Cobos family, and one architect, Andrés de Van der Vira. The numerous collections of both civil and religious buildings that Van der Vera was responsible for are today the greatest indication of Ubeda's architecture, an architecture that amazes us with its greatness, its sobriety and its elegance. This is the case of this magnificent Palacio Vázquez de Molina, currently the city hall. This palace is a masterpiece that was deeply influenced by the Italian architecture. 
and behind us stands the majestic sacred chapel of El Salvador. Francisco de los Cobos appointed Diego de Siloé to design this chapel, which happened in approximately 1530. However, due to demands from the Catholic monarchs to build the cathedral in Granada, de Siloé had to abandon the project in Obeda. He was replaced by Andres de Vandovera, a young creative stonemason who was to be in charge of a project which would last several decades. The chapel was the product of an ambitious project, the result of several factors. Firstly, it was a private chapel. We must add a funeral intention to this sacred aim, as the chapel would be the mausoleum of its founder, aforementioned Francisco de los Cobos, his wife and all his descendants. Lastly, it was a symbol of personal power, reflecting the social status of the man who ordered its construction, something that is evident when you first see it. Words are unnecessary. Just enjoy the view of this incomparable masterpiece of the Spanish Renaissance. It has been said that this is the church which is most closely linked to the history of Úbeda and its inhabitants. Its importance derives from its historical, archaeological and architectural character. It was built on the site of an ancient mosque. Its Renaissance façade dates back to the 17th century and it was crowned by two unmistakable bulrushes at the end of the 19th century. As we will see later, it is a fundamental meeting point during the Holy Week celebration. We could spend longer talking about this square, but for now I suppose that at the sight of these monuments it could be easy to imagine yourself, if not in northern Italy, then at least in other important Renaissance cities such as Salamanca or Alcalá de Neres. Well, now we have come to the next part of our visit. This beautiful square is known by the inhabitants of Úbeda as Paseo del Mercado. The square is surrounded by a maze of narrow streets where we can easily appreciate the typical medieval layout, one of the numerous Muslim legacies that can be admired throughout the town. For instance, not far from here you will find the Museum of Mudakar Art. The Church of San Pablo is another impressive building. The church is the result of many different architectural styles, with its late Romanic façade, its front door and interior design, which are all typically Gothic. One of the chapels is an excellent example of plateresque funeral architecture, as is the handcrafted forge work of the altar. And lastly, to complete our visit of the monuments that mark out this city, we will finish with the most important piece of Renaissance architecture in Obeda, the Hospital of Santiago. But remember that around every corner we can come across a palace, an ancient house, a church or a convent. The hospital was founded by the Bishop Diego de los Cobos, nephew of Francisco de los Cobos, as we pointed out in the chapel of El Salvador, this building also had different purposes. It was a hospital that sheltered all kinds of patients. It was also the house of the bishop, who had his own chambers. It was a chapel, as it has a place where mass can be celebrated. And finally, it was a funeral building, where the bishop was buried. Its construction started around 1562 and finished in 1575. The 
The project is accredited solely to Andrés de Vandalvera alone. This was his last work before he died. Not very often was an architect given the opportunity to design and build such a monument. The first sensation one feels is that of awe, so the visitors who come here for the first time can just exclaim in admiration. Firstly, we can find a 70 metre façade flanked by two majestic towers, all standing right behind a modest promenade. When we cross the impressive façade we get to a large classist courtyard and beautiful old chapel. The chapel is now the auditorium of the cultural centre. With its solemn originality, it represents a masterful combination of the Andalusian Renaissance represented by Vandalvira and the Herrerian style that was beginning to flourish. Due to the greatness, the Hospital of Santiago is known as the Andalusian Escorial. As you can see, it is worth the visit. Literature Ubeda enjoys an intense relationship with culture and literature, the best example of which may be Cervantes' Quixote. But probably the character that is most closely linked to the literary life of Ubeda is this man, the adventure that befell him with a dead body. Cervantes tells in this chapter the story of the kidnapping of a dead body on the night of the 14th of December 1591. This person was St John of the Cross, a small man, great in the eyes of God. Here, this Carmelite monk spent his last days on earth. He was a faithful follower of the Carmelite renovation started by St Teresa of Avila. Now this museum bears his name. Here he left an impression of his great spirit, that of a mystic, theologist and poet. Friend of the poor and wise director of souls, a man of universal fame, the most famous poet in Spanish history. Pouring out a thousand graces, he passed these groves in haste, and having looked at them, with his image alone, clothed them in beauty. Vestidos los dejó de su hermosura. Si por aquí anduvo hace muchos siglos, es excepcional. Many centuries ago, this exceptional man walked in this square, and not many years ago, two children probably played here as well. Two children that would become unique Spanish writers. One of them is Joaquín Sabina, poet and singer, a man that, with his songs, crosses cities, love stories, and solitude. A poet that simply writes what he dreams. The other child, almost the same age as Savina, is the youngest member of the Royal Academy of Spanish Language, Antonio Muñoz Molina, a wonderful novelist that has set the scene for most of his books in his imaginary Andalusian town, Magina. Muñoz Molina says that in the olive groves of Jaén there are no woods that will not let you see the trees. Each tree is alone, in its place, with its austere greyish green. This is something that Antonio Machado also liked. He is our last character today. A universal Andalusian, profound poet and at the same time more popular than any other, Antonio Machado taught French in Baeza, so close by that he could go from one to the other just by walking along this path. He spoke about many things and never got tired of walking and contemplating these fields. They are now a small epilogue to our review of the writers whose works we have had the pleasure to enjoy in these peaceful hills of Ubera.
caminante no hay camino, se hace camino al andar. Gastronomy. We must also show you the delicious food of Ubeda, where many famous chefs were born, and some of the best restaurants in Andalusia are located. We are going to taste some of the most traditional dishes of our cuisine, starting of course with a rabbit and pasta stew called andrajos. The many delicious pork puddings and the red bread rolls known as ochillos. During the year we have many activities in which you can enjoy our many special delicacies, as is the case of the Renaissance dinners, where every detail takes us back to the 16th century. During the annual Renaissance Gastronomy Fair, from January to March, the best restaurants in town offer all kinds of traditional dishes from Ubeda. In order to promote all these products some years ago, the Tapa Fair was launched. Taking place in September, all kinds of tapas, small portions of typical dishes, are offered, all of them free with your drink. And if we talk about our favourite tapa, olives, we must also talk about their origin, the olive tree. Ubera is one of the biggest olive producing territories of Jaén, and probably of the world as well. This has great economical relevance. From December to February the sea of olive trees in Ubeda bears fruit, with the kind effort of every person who crosses this ocean. Anyway, the best thing you can do is come and try it. Traditions and celebrations Ubera, due to its historical heritage, has many festivals and traditions of all kinds. Amongst them we should emphasize the Holy Week. At the beginning of spring, the Brotherhoods, some of which date back to the 16th century, take to the streets to reenact the Passion of Jesus Christ. From Palm Sunday to Easter Sunday, folklore, devotion, colour, silence, solemnity, crowds, emotion and many other sensations take place in this Holy Week, declared as being of national interest to tourists. It comes to a climax on Good Friday, the Friday of Pain, that finishes with the original and magnificent parade of brotherhoods that makes up the general procession. This chronological trip through the key moments of the Passion, Death and Resurrection of Christ 
comes to an end on the night of Good Friday. This could not happen anywhere else but in the magnificent square Vasquez de Molina. This is the place of departure and arrival for the crowd of trumpets, drums, penitents, Christs, virgins. More than ever, it is Ubera which is there, just Ubera. And of course, we also have the contrast of music, one of the best international music festivals that can be found in our country, taking place every spring with worldwide known artists. During mid-June, we celebrate the Renaissance Festival, where you can enjoy the Renaissance in all its different aspects. Visit its monuments, shop in the historical street market, discover the ancient craftsmanship, listen to its music and taste its dishes. The beginning of autumn brings to Ubeda its most playful and popular festival, the St Michael's Fair. It takes place from the last days of September to the first days of October. This fair has become one of the biggest in Andalusia, with a spectacular number of visitors. Some of its outstanding events are the Autumn Theatre Festival, the most modern pop concerts. The bullfighting festival includes a new tradition, the Goyesque bullfight and the art and tradition of the San Nicasio bullring, which is over 100 years old and has witnessed afternoons of bravery and tragedy, as well as the rising of new legends, like Rafael Molina Lagartijo, one of the kings of bullfighting history. Commerce in Ubeda is also more than a way of life, it is another tradition. Capital of the county of La Loma, Ubeda is the commercial link for all the cities in the area, with a fluctuating population of more than 150,000 people, becoming a showcase for a variety of offers and services, including hotel accommodation for more than 700 people. But there is also another type of commerce, traditional in Ubeda, as innate as it is historical, pottery. The Mudejard pottery of Ubeda has survived up until now, continuing to use traditional methods of craftsmanship. In past centuries, all this area was full of pottery workshops and kilns, and very often you could find the pottery guilds in the outskirts of these towns. Nowadays, many of the traditional objects are still produced with methods that have not changed much from the Middle Ages. And today, the craftsmen have added, each with his own personal stamp, new shapes and decorative motifs. And the same happens in other areas of craftsmanship, such as forging and espartograss. As you can see, they are artists more than craftsmen. This is the end of our trip around the city. I hope you liked it, and that next time we will meet in one of these streets that we have walked together. Until then, we will wait for you right here. The legend says that the young and brave leader, Alva Pañez, the young, a relative of El Cid, one afternoon as he tried to spend the boring hours before the battle, met a young and beautiful Moorish girl and they both fell in love. The Count Alvar Fania disobeys the king and his orders to fight with the troops. Between love and military duty, love prevailed. The Christians won, even without the help of Alvar Fania. Nevertheless, the king asked the unreliable leader where he had spent the night and he answered, In those hills, my lord, wandering through the hills of Ubeda. That is why, in Spanish, when someone makes an unexpected decision or answers out of context, we say that he or she wanders off through the hills of Ubeda.